So here's what we're talking about right now. This is what we're talking about. Ready? There are a few parts to this thing that I'm going to give you right now. Okay? Try to follow. It's a little heavy, but let's, let's put our heads together, okay, for a minute? Here's the situation. Situation is, is that over the last few weeks, Pesach and after, and a little bit before, uh, I think we're at, what are, number are we at? Do you know what number we're at? I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I don't know. I don't know. No. But we're in the tens. Okay, if not, we passed the 20 amounts of uh, Jewish Israelis that were butchered in the streets of Israel. Okay, over the last two weeks, two and a half, three weeks. For sure, more than 10. In the tens, I said. Oh, okay. But I think it's over 20 already. Yeah, yeah. It's over 20. Okay. Now, here's the situation. Ready? When someone knocks and you don't answer, they're going to knock louder. And you don't answer, they're gonna, if they need to get into that house... They're going to knock so loud. They're going to go behind, the, the, behind the, the backyard. They're going to go on the roof. They're going to get in the house. They need to get in the house. So closing my ears, putting up shutters, closing my eyes, going under my pillow is not going to make a difference because they're going to get in in the end. So the knock gets louder. The knock gets louder and louder and louder when there's a message. <clears throat> Hold your question. Here's premise number one. Premise number one is like this. We have 48 Nevi'im that were passed down for generations. We had thousands of Nevi'im, but only 48 were written for generations. Now, in this Nevi'im, Hashem clearly says to us that there's not going to be any more Nevi'ah, but when I make a tsunami in Asia, Jewish people, I'm talking to you. And when I make a, a, a hurricane in Miami, Jewish nation, I'm talking to you. Before you get all up in my face and get angry at me, whatever, let me finish, Okay. Here's, because normally people say, oh, how do you know? Hashem is talking to us. That's our fault. That it's because it may wrong happen because we weren't sneers. Nah, eh, eh. That's not my class. That's not what I'm saying. That's not me. That's not where I'm coming at. That's not the Torah we're learning right now. No. So we're going to leave that on the side and now we're going to be open to hearing what I'm trying to say. We're here, we're, we're, what the Torah is trying to tell us. Hashem says, I have no more prophets on planet Earth. Therefore, my way of communicating with, the, with my children, my messengers, my representatives on planet Earth is through episodes that happen in the world. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm blaming the Jewish people for those episodes. It means that I'm communicating with the Jewish people through, through those episodes. Now, here's the thing. That's premise number one. Premise number two. When things happen... Okay, and it says that in every single generation, it says that there's going to be some nation that's going to rise up and want to eradicate the Jewish people. So it's Haman, it's Antiochus, it's Paro, it's, 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 it's Hitler, it's the Spanish Inquisition, it's the Crusades, it's all things. Okay, and every single generation is going to be something. Okay, now he's telling us, in every single generation, there's going to be something. Remember, and then we're moving into phase three Mordechai, Mordechai. What happened with Mordechai? Mordechai knows, it says, Mordechai knows, it's called Asher Nasa. He knows everything that went on in Shemaim. There's a Medrash that explains exactly what happened to him the night he went to sleep and he saw everything that went on in Shemaim, which is the decree and the judgment of the Jewish people. And that's why, in the fact that they went to the party and they did all the virus and all the sexual immorality and everything that went on there, okay? So they, they, they created a tremendous amount of a virus of bad energy, bad, bad malachim. And when there's a certain amount, when it hits a threshold, Din comes down into the world. Judgment. It's just the way it's created. When we do a certain amount of acts of kindness, nisa, miracles are sent down into the world. It's the way things are. There's a spiritual bureaucracy at place. Just like you have to, in order to set up your phone line, you have to like call your carrier and do the whole like, hi, I like to set up my activation code, get the stupid text message. There's a certain bureaucracy that has to go into you having a phone line. There's a certain bureaucracy in the world. It's a spiritual bureaucracy. It's how things happen. You want to get married? You have to do certain things. Like Adalia Fenster gave an example uh, that he was uh, speaking and this lady came up to him afterwards in LA last week and she told him I was desperate to get married. I was like so desperate already to get married. I did everything. I went to and And she learned from him that doing Tikkun Chatzos, waking up in the middle of the night and doing Tikkun Chatzos and like really doing his Buddhas with Hashem has like in terms of what, what, like a spiritual wattage, it's a much higher what 
when you wake up chatzos time at night because there's a tremendous amount of rachamim then. So when you pray then, your tefillah goes like at a, way higher. It's like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, you have to look it up in my zmanim. When you wake up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning to have a DMC with God, it's a lot, it's a lot more powerful than, let's say, having a shachris at 10. Just, that's how he set it up. What? You get up out of bed and you have, like, you get up and you do it. You read the text. The Tikkun Chatos is the text where you cry over the base of Mingdash. You just read over the text. You don't have to cry, actually. You just read the text and then you can have, just talk to God. It's the highest, it's the most rachamim time of the night. Then you go to bed after? Yeah, you go to sleep. You could be up for like 10 minutes. The whole thing could be 10, 15 minutes. Anyway, she said that. She had it up to here. She was, diving, she was doing school. She was diving in class. Nothing, nothing, nothing was bringing it up. Nothing was giving her that last push. You know, you do, you do, you do, you do. Sometimes you need that last push over the fence. Okay? So she said she heard this class. She got up. She did Tikkun Chasos. She said, I, she, he said, she comes up to me in the class, she said, I got up, I had this real conversation with Hashem, this is Bodhidus with Hashem, at three o'clock in the morning, and I just want to tell you, not only did I get married, but I'm also pregnant right now. So I want to say thank you. Because there's certain things that you do that have a strong wattage. The more, is that how you say it? Voltage? Wattage? Voltage. Voltage. The more, the more something is difficult for you, ta-da! It's hard for me to say shachars. It's hard for me to say blessings, say brachos. It's hard for me to... Whatever it is that's hard for me, okay? The harder it is for me, the more weight it carries for me. Period. You need that extra push off over the fence. You need that extra push in the rear end to like get some, to get your blessing that you want to get in your life. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again, over again and expecting different results. Doesn't work. You need to do something that's going to crush it. You need to like do something that's going to be more. Forty days. Shmir salashon to halachos. Take something on yourself. Do a chesed. Go out there. Do something. Something that you're not doing that's going to add voltage to your to your mileage. To your to your, to your it's going to give you traction. It's going to give you leverage, spiritual leverage, because there's a bureaucracy in the world. So what's he saying about Mordechai? Go back to phase three for a second. Mordechai. It says that Mordechai goes to sleep. Medrash says he sees everything that went in Shemaim. He sees that in Shemaim, all the, you know, how you have the prosecutor, prosecutor gets up in front of Hashem. He says, look, the Jewish people had this, this amount of Averis last night. And in the eight days or how many days were they at the party? It was a 180 day party. They were there for a week. The Jews were welcome for a week. For the week that they were there, the sexual immorality, all the averos, all the stuff that they did, seeing the, the, the non-Jews drinking and eating from the tequilim of the, uh, the base of Megdash, seeing uh, Achashverosh wearing the big day of the big day Kohen Gadol, all of that, turning a blind eye to all of that, all that added up, added up, added up, added up, added up, boom, din. What was the din? The whole Jewish people, men, women, children, Yidalad Adar, wiped out. Mordechai wakes up in the morning. You have to understand, Mordechai didn't go to the party. This was right after the party. Nobody knew about this yet. Haman was just in the, it's all in his head. It's all cooking in his head. No one knows about this yet. No one knows about the private conversation that Haman had with Achashverosh behind closed doors and before he gave him the ring. Nobody knows about this. The Jewish people that went to the party, the rest of the Jewish people, everyone that did or didn't go, everybody's waking up regular, waking up, eating breakfast, sending their kids to school, going to work. Everything's normal. Nobody knows anything that's happening behind closed doors, but Mordechai knows. How does Mordechai know? Why? Ruch HaKodesh. how? How come he got Ruch HaKodesh and nobody else got Ruch HaKodesh? Because he was like willing to accept Hashem. How come Mordechai had Ruch and nobody else did? He was there for Hashem. He was with He? He was with Hashem. And everything he did in the way he Anybody else? Have anything to add in? Everything is right. Yeah. Mordechai had the eyes and the ears and the heart to understand Hashem's workings in the world. There was no Yad Hashem. It didn't look like there was any Yad Hashem. That's why the Megillah doesn't say Hashem's name at all. Because there was, it almost looked like there was no Ashgach HaPratis, the opposite of Ashgach HaPratis. Everyone, everything is going to hell. Everything, everything. Fast. Everything. Okay? And Mordechai, instead of like, wait, everybody, we have to, we have to, we have to fight the king. We have to get together. We have to create an army. We have to, we have to save our lives. Everybody, run for your life. Everybody, uh. instead of that, it says that Mordechai put on ash and sackcloth and goes out and teaches the kids, the children, aliphase and the praise and does tshuva and goes to sits under Esther's door. He doesn't get every. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't do any of that. 
And here's the bottom line rule of thumb. Rule of thumb forever and ever. Remember for your life. Forever. Because we are, in, we are in times of Mashiach. And these times are shaky and different. And we don't know what to expect. Rule of thumb. Keep this in your back pocket, in your front pocket, in your top pocket all the time. When the non-Jews, when the nations of the world, because b'chol dor v'dor amdim aleinu, right? B'chol dor v'dor. And every single generation, the generation a nation is going to rise. When they rise against our bodies, when, I'm sorry, when they rise against our souls, which means, it's okay, we could chill. Just don't do Shabbos, Rosh Chodesh, Mila. Don't, don't, don't do anything that makes you into a Jew. Be like me, and then we can chill. Like Hanukkah. The Jewish reaction has to be a physical one. Mila Hashem Elai. The Jewish reaction has to be war, physical war, army, rabim, against me'atim. It has to be, it has to be a physical one. It can't be, it can't be, now we sit and pray. When they're coming for our souls, we lift up our sleeves and we go out to battle, physical war. When the attack is against our bodies, which means we don't care if you say Shema Yisrael or you don't say Shema Yisrael. We don't care if your father was a Jew or your mother was a Jew. If you have any Jewish blood in you, you're a Jew. We don't care if you're religious, not religious, black, white, it doesn't matter. You're a Jew, we want to kill you, which is exactly what's going on today. When they come to attack our body, the body of the Jewish people, the physical body, it doesn't matter if they're religious, not religious, Tel Aviv, Bnei Brak, it doesn't matter. The reaction must be a spiritual reaction. When they're coming at our soul, we have to react with body. When they're coming at our body, we have to react with soul. Reacting with soul means we have to react with kind acts of spirituality. Well, now here's the thing. These terrorist attacks, you, have, you can't just stop and pray when someone's running at you at the night? No, and that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's happening, right? It's happening all around us. You just said it yourself. Every day there's another terrorist attack. We can't mourn one before another one happens. If I just sit here and be like, it's none of my business, like, I vey, or like, I'll send prayers, or just like, whatever, I just want to close my ears and my eyes to the reality that's going on, and just like keep moving on with my life and not have anything, any kind of reaction really. If that's, if that's where I'm at, then the knock is, God forbid, going to get louder. Because the reaction not while you're, God forbid, not you, but a person who's running away from the, the, the terrorism or, God forbid, any act of anti-Semitism. Not then. But how do I react to the fact that their heads were chopped off three days ago in front of their children with an axe? Do you know that that's what happened? Do you know that that's what happened a half hour from here three days ago? And you Matmoud in the middle of the afternoon to our brothers? If my heart is hard, if I have a heart that's made out of stone, and that's what it says, before Mashiach comes, the Jewish people's hearts are going to be made out of stone. I, I send prayers. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Whatever. Let's watch a movie. If my heart is made out of stone, it's not made out of flesh and blood. If that's, then I don't, and I don't, I don't care really. And I don't care that two out of the three fathers that were, the three fathers that were butchered, Okay? The, another two that were also hurt and they're fighting for their lives right now in the hospitals. If I don't care about them, if I don't care that this is happening, what do you think? The knock is going to go away? Things I'm just going to stop? Things are just going to stop? It's not stopping. It's on a rise. Hashem is getting the knock louder and louder and louder. Listen to step number four. Step number four is like this, and then you can ask all your questions. Step number four, follow this train of thought because this is crucial, crucial, crucial to understand. And if you want to really be in the know and not just be in, you know, in a sort of like fragmented reality where it's like, oh, that's happening there or to them. You know, oh, it's the guys in Boston that went to an Israeli, you know, Independence Day uh, something. It's happening. It's the attack is on the Jew. And when they attack the Jew, in essence, what they're attacking, in essence, between us, what they're really attacking is they're attacking God. And what does that mean? We are the Jewish people. We are representatives of God in the world. It's evil versus good. It's evil. It's dark versus light. Okay? That's what's going on here. It's the struggle between the Malach of Esau and Yaakov. That is what's happening here. That is what's happening here. And as long as I, me, I'm the only one of the Jewish people, of the 14, uh, 15 million Jews in the world, okay? How many of them know that they're Jewish? 
Of the ones that know that they're Jewish, how many of them care that they're Jewish? Of the ones that care that they're Jewish, how many of them even practice anything? Of the ones that practice anything, how many of them even mean anything? How many of them are even in the game? Okay, so you dive in Shachos today and yesterday you didn't, or tomorrow you won't, but you're in the game. You care. You're trying. You wake up in the morning. You try. You fail. You want to go to class. You have a Yitzhahara not to go to class. You push against the Yitzhahara. You're in the game. How many of us are in the game? How many of us have the ears to hear Hashem talking to us? Mordechai had the ears. And Mordechai had died. Call Hashem Nasa. He knew everything. How did he know everything? Because he had the ears. Because he cares. Because he's in the game. Because it's not just what I see on the news. It's what's going on behind the scenes that I'm in sync with. That I'm, I'm in the know about. And how do I know about that? Because Hashem tells us straight up in the Torah. He says to us, when I deal with din, when you see din and, 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 and Jewish men, our brothers, being axed, their heads being chopped off in the middle of, 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 of a, a town with everyone out in the middle of the afternoon, on Yom Atzmaut, in front of their children, if that's happening minutes away from where we are and my reaction is numb, I have to remember one thing and one thing only. And this is something that I will never forget. I'm not Chabad, but this is something that I will never forget my whole life. Having been taken to the Rebbe before I even knew what God was, or that God existed, every Sunday, God knows why they took me, because they didn't even know why they were going, and waiting in line, freezing cold weather, to get a dollar for like a second. You got a dollar? Of course, a few times. Yeah. Your parents yeah, my secular parents that don't keep Shabbos don't even know why. They stood in line every, mor- every Sunday morning on 770 and we went to the Rebbe. Do you have pictures? I have pictures of what? I have a dollar in my house. You can come see it. Gemini. Yeah, you can search up on Gemini. Was that your picture of you with the Rebbe? Yeah. Yeah, you can get it online. If you tell... How do I search millions of people? Search up the date. Do you know the date? It's on a dollar. I have a dollar. the date... And that date on Jen, and you'll find your picture. Oh my gosh. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do that. Yeah, if you know the date. I went a bunch of times. I was really little. I was really, really little. I was tiny, okay? I became religious when I was 12. I must have been six or seven. Okay, I didn't even know anything about anything. I didn't know who these people were. I didn't know what this man was. I didn't know anything. I knew Santa Claus before I knew, like, God. Like, that's where I was. I was, hollow, I was trick-or-treating before anything else, like, anything Jewish. Okay? So... The, th- the one thing that amazed me, I remember, was that how does one human being, he's a human, okay? He's human. He was born out of my mom's stomach. He's human. How does one human being make such an insane impact for so long and so many people? Like, ha- for so long, <laughs> like generations to come and like, like great grandchildren of like people that aren't even born yet are going to become religious through his teachings and through some Chabad house that they're going to end up landing somewhere. How does one human, human, one human, it's a human being, okay, do that? And you know how he did that? His heart was flesh and blood. His heart, it says that before Mashiach comes, the Jewish people's hearts are going to be made out of stone. Lev shall even. And Mashiach is going to come, he's going to turn our hearts into hearts of flesh and blood. We're all going to have a heart like the Rebbe had. Where he just literally cared. Just literally cared. Physically couldn't fall asleep at night, Thursday night, thinking that you don't have a Shabbos meal Friday night. Can't fall asleep. Can't. Bothers me. I can't. That is a heart that cares. Uh, we, can't, we can't keep walking around with hearts of stone and be like, oh, wow, Neba, I can't believe that happened. Uh, what movie are we watching tonight? Watch the stupid movie. I don't care. That's not the point. The point is that if it doesn't bother me, it has to bother me. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Because it's not my fault that Jewish people are dying. It's not my fault, even though that's what everyone would like to say, that it's our fault. It's our responsibility. It's our responsibility. Which means what? Which means what? It's like this. It's like this. You walk by a car accident, God forbid. You're the only person on the scene. You're not going to run open the door, take the kid out of the back seat. You're not going to help the mother get out of her seatbelt. 
You're not gonna, you're the only one there. You're not gonna do something. I'm not a medic. I'm not Hatzalah. I was just walking by. It's not my fault. It's not a matter of fault. You gotta go in. You gotta lift your sleeves, and you gotta make it. You gotta help them. Hashem is talking to us because He's saying, "Listen, Jewish people. Hi. I know that ninety-five percent of you are asleep, assimilated, have no idea what Torah is, don't even know what that exists. Okay, I'm not talking to you because you don't have the ears or the eyes to understand me. You don't get me. It's not the same language. Not you. I'm talking to the five percent, the ones that learn my Torah, get the secret code behind." Whatever it is, I'm not giving you, um, but a, a, a chunk. Where we're how many? 15 million Jews in the world? How many of them know? How many of them are assimilated? How many of them care? How many of them are even, how many of them learn Torah? Of the religious Orthodox ones, how many are really religious and Orthodox that have Yerushalayim? How many of them wake up in the morning, take a bus, and go to the Kotel and Davin? How many? How many? How many are we talking to? Those are the ones that have ears and eyes. Those are the Mordechais. Where are the Mordechais? I was, I was, I was born, I was supposed to be, I was supposed to be one of the 95%. Not to know, not to hear, to watch the news and to say, oh my God, that's terrible. Those Arabs, they're evil. That's so terrible. Oh my God, I feel so bad for the Jews. I was supposed to be one of those, but for whatever reason, out of a class of 25, God picked me and took me out of public school, out of pork eating, out of whatever, that whole life that I was living, and put me in a Jewish school where I eventually, from the whole class of 18 girls, me and another girl, the only ones that keep Shabbos today, everybody does it because it's a Kir school. And somehow I was chosen to now be in the know. I know, I have the eyes, I have the ears. When these things happen, I know that what God wants is a reaction of chesed, of love, of kindness, of heart, not of stone, not of, oh well, I don't want to hear about it, it's not my deal, it's not my business, I can't deal with it, oh, it's so gory, oh my God, those evil Arabs. She wants a reaction of heart. A reaction of heart is, and if I don't feel it, and this is part five, this is the lemaisa what I do. Because we are in a generation where we're numb. We're numb. Could we see so much terror all around us that sadly it's like... Terror, like, death, corona. You get so upset, but like at the end of the day, you're like, I, like, yes, I'll do my part. I'll, I'll take care of I'll dive in for that. I'll say, bro, that hammer, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, you're like... God is doing this. Mm. God, is God also got that lady in a car accident, but he put you on the scene. Which means you have the eyes and you have the ears for a reason. And you know what the reason is? For This is the, the part five of this class. And with this, I'll let you ask questions and then you can go. This is the clincher. This is what the point is. This is the whole point. This is the bottom line. I have to, when I hear these things, I need to go have a talk with Hashem and say like this. This is the script. This is what you say. Hashem, I don't feel. I'm numb. These things are happening all the time. I'm numb. I don't feel. Hashem, I want to feel. I want to care. I want to have a heart that isn't stoned over. I want to care. I don't want to be frozen. I don't want to be frozen because you know what? There are going to be the ones, there are ones amongst us, the leaders amongst us, that when they hear these things, they can fall asleep at night. And they can't not go to the Shiva house. And they can't not collect things for kids, toys for the kids that are 16 orphans that we have for the last three days. 16 orphans. The, the oldest is 17 and the youngest is three. They can't not know the names of the men that died and they can't not, they can't, they can't, they can't, I can't, I can't. I can't just watch a movie now. Hashem, and if I could just, and if I don't feel anything, and if I'm part of the problem, God, because I know that I have the eyes and I have the ears, but I just don't feel, turn my heart of stone into a heart of Basar Badam. Turn it into a heart of flesh and blood. Help me care. Help me feel. Help me want to feel. Help me feel connected to my brothers and sisters. Help me feel like their pain is my pain. Because there's no one else that cares or hears or anything. And I don't want this knock to get louder. I want to care. I want to care about you having a Shabbos meal. I want it to, I want it to bother me. I want it to like, be on my mind. I want myself not to be able to keep going and just be like, whatever, it's not my business. I want your gosh to be my ruchnius. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want to want. That's what I'm saying. And that's how, that's really how 
the Rebbe became the Rebbe. It's not like he, it's just because he wanted. Like he set himself up to win. And then Hashem says, oh my gosh, you're in the driver's seat. You're in the captain's seat. You're in the leadership position. You want to want to care. You want the, to bleed for, your, for, for his children. You want it? I'm going to set you up. I'm going to make you the vessel for so many good things that are going to come generations later because you wanted it. You think he knew that what would he, when he was 18, 17, 16, he knew what he was going to be, what he was going to do in the world? He didn't know. He just put himself in the position to win. He didn't it originally Of course. He didn't want. He just cared. When people care, they can't help themselves. Who do we love? Who do we love spending time with? Who do we go to? Who do we want to go to Shabbos again and again and again? It's not the fancy houses. It's not the great food. It's the people that care. People look, us, put, look, look at us and we know that they see us and that they care about us. We know that when, they, when we tell them we don't have short summer plans because something ends up and this and this, they, like, they start making phone calls for us. Those are the people we love to be around. I want to be a person that I love to be around. I want to be that person. And it doesn't just, it doesn't come by like overexerting yourself. You don't need to overexert yourself. You just need to ask. You just need to have your heart in the right place. And say, Hashem, I want my heart in the right place. I want to care about your people, you your children. So if you care so much about everything and everyone. Of course, in a healthy way though. Before I came here tonight, and before I came here tonight, I had a really, really, really hard, emotionally hard day today. Okay. And the, the whole day I was thinking, okay, I'm going to call it and cancel. I'm going to call it. I can't. I physically can't teach. All the way up to 6.30. By 6.40, I have to be in class by 6.45, I got dressed. Okay? Why? And I'm not, this is not like trying to say it. It was only because I literally couldn't speak. Like friends called me today. I couldn't talk. Couldn't talk at all. I didn't want to talk. I was very quiet. When I get emotional, I get quiet. And I go inside. And so teaching is the opposite of what I really want to do. Really want to do. And I really don't want to be here. That's the truth. Sorry. Love you guys. It's not you. It's me. I told you. But the only reason I came here tonight, the only reason I came here tonight, besides for the fact that I asked Chaisar and I knew she would tell me to go. That's why I asked her. The only reason I came here tonight is because I know that when... You do something for the Jewish souls, for Hashem's children. Nothing, nothing competes with that in the world. There is nothing that can compete. No mitzvah, no Shabbos, no Tzniyas. No mitzvah can compete with showing up for another Jew. No mitzvah. And even though I didn't really care about that either, Deep down, I knew that I did care about that because that's, what, that's what's needed. I need to show up. I need to show up for Torah learning, for, for Jewish sisters, for, to do the right thing, to show up. You know, I don't feel like it. It was really hard. So I'm really happy I did it. I am now. I'm happy I did it. I had no, no, like, uh, no capacity to even speak, but it was really good that I did because now I feel better, much better, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I just wanted to leave us off with this message because Hashem, Hashem is talking to us. And uh, our, our personal hardships that are going on in our lives are also part of the situation that's going on on a, on a cloud level. All of us. So we're all taking the blows. And the only thing that we have to do is just ask Hashem to put my heart in the right place and to make me care in a healthy way to make me care, to make me be alive, awake, even if it hurts more than just being ignorant, because ignorance is bliss, even though it hurts more a little bit sometimes. It's the right reaction. It hurts to have to drive, to go into that car accident and pull them out. It hurts to have to see it. It hurts to have to be a part of it. But it also means that you're the hero. So it's not our fault, but it's our responsibility. Yes, question. Are you just hanging out? Oh, you're just hanging out. Anyone have any questions? Thoughts? Comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Love you guys. And before you go home, like, we should do something together. Yes, please. Let's have a night in my, in my uh, garden. Let's have a bonfire. I was just thinking that, Leah, with, like,
I should have bought fire. We did one in the field there. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Everyone bring their blankets. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah, and also, you've been to my house. You saw that huge area I have there. Yeah. We could do it there also. We could do it there. I don't we have a garden party. Yeah. I don't have a garden, but we have a court. I have a court. We have a basketball game. <laughs> I got it.